I need to know if your mom is, is breathing. She's dead, miss. Okay, and what did you do then? There's blood all over the floor. I need to know, do you think we can help your mom? Miss, she's dead. I woke up in a bunch of locations. I grabbed one of the kitchen items and then I went to our room and then I ate. It's okay, you guys, I ate. She killed it. Were you wearing the same clothes you're wearing now? Yeah. Uh, there's some red stains there. Is that blood? I think it is. Okay. I have a little bit of blood on my hands. On your hands too? Yes. Okay. We are now seeing some new video of a teen on um, that moment right before and after he is accused of stabbing his mother to death in Hialeah last year. He was captured on doorbell ring camera and local 10 news reporter Leanne Motohong is live in Hialeah. She tells us about what the teen suspect had to say about those videos or what he was saying in the videos. This is an incredibly disturbing story about a South Florida teen named Derek Rosa. In October of 2023, Derek, who is just 13 years old, brutally killed his own mother, Irina Garcia, just one week after she gave birth to a baby girl, his little sister. He did this with a knife he took from their own kitchen. How did things get this messed up? What causes a 13-year-old with a seemingly pretty normal family to snap and do something this evil? Take a look at this family picture that Irina posted while she was pregnant with Derek's little sister. Dressed in all pink to announce the upcoming birth of the baby girl, Derek, Irina, and Derek's stepfather, Frank, all look happy, but we all know that looks can be deceiving. Is it possible that Derek wasn't as excited as he may have seemed about getting a new sibling? This is one of the many questions yet to be answered in this case. There are so many things about this story that makes it one of the most twisted and almost unbelievable cases involving child killers. For one thing, there is the incredibly young age of the killer. At 13 years old, he's one of the youngest people to commit a crime this heinous in recent years. Then there's also the fact that he not only killed his own mother, the person who gave him life, but then joked around about it afterwards by taking a silly selfie at the murder scene. But perhaps one of the most chilling parts of this entire situation is how there seems to have been pretty much zero red flags or any advanced signs at all that Derek was going to do something like this. He was, at least as far as anyone could tell, just a normal eighth grader with a pretty typical life. He also seems to have had no apparent motive other than the fact that he just wanted to know what it would feel like to kill someone. On the night that Derek ended up taking the life of his mother, they hadn't been in some sort of big fight or disagreement. She had only reminded him not to run while outside the apartment. This was nothing more than a typical mom reminder as she tried to keep her teen from falling or accidentally running into someone. One of those clips actually captures a brief interaction between Derek and his mother in which uh, it's very typical between a young teen and a mom. Mom says, hey, be careful don't run outside and he is sort of asking you know why do you always say that mom why do you always tell me not to run the interaction is in Spanish and seems pretty harmless but when you take it into the context of everything that happened that night it just shows how this situation this relationship between son and mother then turned so deadly could this seemingly simple, gentle reminder have been enough to push Derek over the edge? This interaction was actually caught on video, so take a look for yourself. 13-year-old Derek Rosa on doorbell camera. His mother holding her newborn baby, cautioning her teen son not to run. He asks her in Spanish why she always tells him not to run. Seconds later, he re-enters the apartment. Irina Garcia still in the same chair with her baby. In just a short time after this, Irina would be dead and that newborn little baby would be without a mother. Moments after this, police say Rosa killed his mother. Garcia was found at the foot of her bed, suffering from multiple stab wounds to the neck. Her newborn daughter lay just inches away in her crib unharmed. Not long after brutally killing his own mom, Derek called 911 and turned himself in. Can you bring the police over here where I live? What is your address? I don't know my address. Are you by yourself with your mom? Yes, no, my, my baby sister's here too, she's sleeping. While some parts of that 911 call were redacted, what was released for the public to hear is nothing short of shocking. While the dispatcher is trying to work through what happened and see if anything can be done to try to save Irina's life, it is clear that Derek has already accepted the fact that his mother is dead and beyond any help. I need to know if your mom is, is breathing. She's dead, miss. Okay, and what did you do then? Blood all over the floor. I need to know, do you okay. think we can help your mom? 
Jesus. While Derek is confessing to the murder, he suddenly remembers something he did after killing his mom. He took pictures of the murder scene and sent them to someone on the internet. While we obviously can't show you the picture of the victim that Derek took, take a look at this selfie he took with his phone right after the brutal murder. He's sticking out his tongue and flashing a hand symbol, all while posing in the same room where he just attacked and killed his mother. If you take a look closer, you'll see the red substance on his hand. That's the blood of his own mother. Miss, yes. I took pictures and I told my friends about it. Was that bad? You told who about it? My friends. Who did you send us pictures to? My friends. I don't know his real name because he is an online friend who I play with a lot. When the 911 dispatcher asks Derek about his baby sister, he seems to want to make it as clear as possible that he didn't hurt her and never wanted to. This is interesting because if he supposedly killed his mother without a second thought, what would have kept him from killing his sister too? After all, she would have been a much easier target considering she could not fight back the way Irina could. But Derek was telling the truth. His baby sister was found unharmed. Where is your sister? She's in her crib sleeping. I how, cannot do her. How old is your sister? She's only like a week old. Okay, and you did not touch her, correct? No, I did not touch her. I didn't want to touch my sister. Law enforcement had a difficult time finding Derek's apartment because he didn't know the address. The dispatcher told him to go outside and see if he could find a mailbox or a number or something else he could give them to try to help pinpoint his location. Okay, I need you, I need you to go and find me your address because I don't know where you are right now, okay? Okay, I'll it, try to find a mail. Okay, try to find a mail please, can you? I'll, I'll try, I'll try. Derek seems almost relieved when he sees red and blue lights flashing in the distance because it means that officers are nearby. Some people in his position would be afraid because he surely knows that his time being a free man will be over soon. But Derek doesn't seem to be thinking like this. He just seems to be glad this situation will be soon out of his hands and someone else will be taking over. Uh, 201. The doorbell camera also captures Derek as he speaks with a dispatcher, confirming his apartment number. I see officers. I see officers. Do I leave? Do I leave my no, house? Do not leave. Do not leave. Okay. The dispatcher later advises him not to leave the apartment. As the door closes, slides flash in the distance. Derek is brought into custody and taken into an interrogation room where he will be interviewed and questioned by detectives. Derek is not crying and does not seem to really be displaying any emotion at all. Maybe he's in shock or has not yet processed what he has done, or maybe he's too busy wondering about what's going to happen to him next to show what he is truly thinking or feeling. I'm just gonna go over a couple things with you first. Uh, just so... Just for the record, today's date is Friday, October 13, 2023, and the time is currently 2.40. AM. The detectives start with some seemingly mundane and unimportant questions. They don't really seem to have anything to do at all with the reason he is sitting there in the interrogation room. In fact, while listening to these questions, you might even wonder why it seems like the officers are wasting their time asking this killer teen about what sort of grades he gets. But there are a lot of reasons that the detectives can't just jump into questions about the murder right away. First, they need to try to figure out what kind of state of mind Derek is in. They want to figure out if he is even able to answer the most basic questions. They also need to warm him up and get him to trust them. That's the only way they're going to get what they need from him and get him to open up about every crucial detail from that night. You go to school, right? What grade are you in? Eighth grade. Eighth grade? Uh, good student? Uh, A's and stuff like that? A's and B's. What, um, what, uh, what reading class are you in right now? You know, uh, what do you take? Um, I just need language arts. Language arts, okay. So you can read with no, with no problem? Yeah. The detectives have to read Derek his rights. 
This is a unique sort of situation because not only is Derek a minor, but he doesn't have a parent or guardian with him in the interrogation room. The specific laws about questioning minors without a parent or guardian present can vary from state to state. In this case, Derek doesn't have to answer the detective's questions if he doesn't want to. He can choose to stay completely silent. Or he can choose to answer some of the questions, but not all. If he does decide to answer questions and ends up incriminating himself in the process, then what he says, prosecutors will be able to use against him in court. Before we ask you any questions, you must understand your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in, in the court. If, you, if you, you have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions and to have a lawyer present with, with you during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you before any questioning if you desire. If you decide to answer these questions now without a lawyer present, you still have the right to stop answering at any time or until you talk to a lawyer. Ultimately, Derek decides that he will cooperate with the detectives and answer their questions. He signs off on a form stating that he understands what he has agreed to. Okay, this is the form right here, okay? Okay. Now, I want you to follow, actually to read here. Okay, read this little dot right here. Um, yes. Before we ask you any questions, you must understand the rights, your rights. Okay, you understand that? Yeah. To be extra sure that Derek understands what all is at stake here and what he has agreed to, the detectives have him read the form out loud. It's hard to imagine that someone his age is able to fully understand what's going on here. I do not want a lawyer at this time. I understand and know what I'm doing. No promises or threats have been made to me. No pressure or coercion. Coercion, that's coercion. that we're forcing you to do something. Okay. You understand, you're, whatever you're doing, you're doing on your own voluntarily basis, making an educated decision for yourself, okay? Okay. The detectives told Derek that if he agreed to sign permission, they were going to proceed to question him without a lawyer present. It was important for him to be able to understand what his rights were fully. If he just signed because he thought he was supposed to, then they might not actually be able to use the statements that he was about to make in regards to the events leading up to the murder of his mother. Derek's young age and lack of experience is evident many different times throughout the questioning. For example, when he's asked about not having an attorney present, he says that he doesn't even know what an attorney is. What's an attorney? An attorney is someone that can represent you in legal matters. Okay. Do you, you know what a lawyer is? Yeah. It's the same thing. Derek, can you state your full name for the record? I'm in the zoo. Huh? I'm in the zoo. Yeah, everything, your full name. Derek Stephen Rosen. What's your date of birth? August 26, 2010. Uh, what's your address? I don't know my address. Okay. What's your telephone number? You don't know it either? No. Derek does not know his own address or even his telephone number. These are things that most people his age are able to remember, unless it's a new address. But this was not the case for Derek, who tells detectives that he had been in his current home and apartment since he was 11, so for a total of two years. Still, the fact that Derek doesn't know these things is all the more interesting when considering the fact that you'll notice he knows a lot about other things, particularly when it comes to deadly weapons but more on that coming in a little bit. The detectives start by establishing the basics of what Derek's life looks like by asking him about his family and who he lived with. Okay, uh, who lives there with you? My mom, now my sister, because I had, my mom has um, a daughter a week ago, okay. and my stepdad. What's your sister's name? Okay, and um, and your your stepfather, do you know his name? Yes. What's his name? Frank Ramos. Frank Ramos. Derek explained that he stayed with his mom most of the time, but he would see his dad on the weekends. One night before the murders, Derek spent the night at his mom's house, his primary residence, just like usual. The detective then begins to ask Derek about how his school day went on the day before the murders. He is likely trying to figure out if there was anything out of the ordinary or something that could have set him off or made him angry, or in any way influenced his decision to kill his mom. So tell me about your day in school, regular day at school? I didn't do too much work. You didn't do too much work? No. 
um, a regular release day uh, time and stuff yeah. like that. You get how do you get there in bus? Yeah. Okay. You got back. But according to Derek, the day was totally normal. It was an average day at school, and he took the bus back home like he always did. When he got home, he didn't go hang out with his friends, but stayed at home with his family, and then went to bed at his usual time. Um, were you, uh, do you, do you communicate with people over the phone? Were you talking? Tell me what happened tonight. Tonight? Yeah. Well, at around, like... 10, I went to bed. Okay. My mom did too. Is that your regular time? Like mm -hmm. nine? Yeah. Okay. You guys uh, explain to me about the apartment. You have your own room? Yes. And your mom? Yes, she has her own room. She has her own room and your sister? She stays in the same room as my mom. Finally, the detectives are ready to start talking about the night of the murder. And tonight, who was all there? Me, my mom, and my sister. Okay, so you went to sleep around 10? Yeah. Okay, and then what? I woke up. Right when it seems like the interview is getting to the most important part, the time of the murder, the audio cuts out. This is because what exactly Derek told investigators was not released to the public right away. It was released later, however, and he was arrested and charged with murder. I woke up, no I grabbed one of the kitchen items and then I went to our room and I had it. It's okay, you guess it. That right there was the number one thing detectives had been wanting to get out of Derek during that interrogation a confession. You killed her? All right. Um, what type of what type of knife was it? Do you know? It was just a big size kitchen knife. That big? Yeah. What color was the, the the handle? Purple. Purple? Yes. Okay. Uh, your mom was sleeping? Yes, yeah, she was sleeping. Notice how when Derek talks about killing his mom, his expression doesn't change. His voice doesn't even crack a little bit. It's as if he's totally disconnected from reality or simply doesn't care about what he has done at all. What did you do uh, after you killed her? My stepdad has, I mean, he owns two guns. He has a Glock 19. Okay. And then, uh, I don't know what it's called, another one. Okay. What color are they? The Glock 19 is black, and then the other one has a silver slide and then, like, a dark bluish handle. Even from just the little bit of information that Derek provides about his stepfather's weapons, you can tell that he is at least somewhat knowledgeable about these types of things. This is because he has seen his stepfather use them at target practice before. So, what did you do with the guns? He always has his Glock 19 with him at all times. And since he's a truck driver, he was at home, he was far away. Okay. So I went into the closet. Mm -hmm. I found uh, his book mm -hmm. bag because he goes to gun ranges. Okay. I grabbed the gun. I put the magazine in the gun. Okay. I pulled back to slide, but I wanted, I didn't want to shoot myself. Okay. Uh, I intended to myself before, but I couldn't. At this point, Derek is talking about what he did after killing his mom. He retrieved his stepdad's weapon with the intention of taking his own life, but when it came down to it, he was not able to follow through and pull the trigger. And then what did you do? I decided to call my friends to tell them what happened, and then I said goodbye to my friends. You called them before you decided to try to shoot yourself or afterwards? After. Okay. How many friends did you call? Only one. What's his name? I don't know his real name, he's an online friend. In some ways, all things considered, Derek's decision to call his friend makes sense. He knew it would likely be the last chance he would ever get to speak to him before his arrest. Then there's the fact that this friend does not live close by or even within the state and doesn't even know him in real life. He knew he probably wouldn't tell anyone. So how did you communicate with him? My cell phone. Through your cell phone, so you have his number? Yes. And you don't have him stored under a certain name or you used to have him stored under a gamer tag? I have him, I made up an, a name for him. You made up a name for him? Yeah. What name did you make up for him? Sweden. Part of what Derek claims he told his friend about the murder is redacted. Could this be due to extremely graphic details? Possibly. And what did you tell Sweden? I told him what I did. 
What exactly did you tell Sweden when you say what I did? Did you tell them how or no? How you killed her or no? Okay, did you send them any pictures? Yes. Uh, how many pictures did you send them? I sent them two of my mom and one of me. Derek tells detectives that after he told his friend what he had just done, the friend did not believe him at first. This could be why he decided he needed to send the pictures as proof. After sending the photos and realizing that he would not be able to take his life the way he planned, Derek decided to call 911. In between doing all these things, Derek never washed off the blood and gore from his skin and clothes. He admitted there was still some of his mom's blood on his hands, even as he sat in the interrogation room. Were you wearing the same clothes you're wearing now? Yeah. Uh, there's some red stains there, is that I think it is. Okay. And a little bit of hands. And your hands too? Yes. Okay. Did you ever make your way to your sister? Killing her? N no. Touching her? Touching her? No. No? I left her alone. She was sleeping and she didn't wake up, so I didn't touch her. Okay. All right. In the next clip, Derek is asked about where on his mom's body he attacked her. While his response is redacted, you will see on the video as he eerily gestures towards his neck. Let's get back to your mom. Okay, you said she was sleeping. Yes. Okay. Where exactly did you cut her? Derek confirms to the detective that he purposefully went for his mother's artery when he attacked her. He also confirmed that she was asleep when he first attacked her, but that she woke up after he drove the weapon into her neck. And then she woke up? Yes. And did you say anything else to her? Did she say anything to you or no? No, she just screamed. She just screamed. Yes. It's hard to imagine the terror and absolute confusion that Irina must have felt at that moment. One minute she's falling asleep alongside her newborn baby and everything is fine, and the next she's being viciously attacked by her own son. Why did you have your mom? Can you go to the bathroom before I answer that? Yes, of okay. course. Of course. Give me one second. You want to take him for me? I uh, have patrol team. Why did Derek choose that exact moment to ask to go to the bathroom? Could he have been trying to buy himself some extra time to think things over and decide what he's going to tell detectives? The detective notices Derek's hesitancy to answer the big why question in terms of his motive, so they don't go back to it right away. They instead ask him about his social media logins and what he told the cops when they first arrived on the scene. When the police got there, did you tell, did you say anything to the police? That you were in I the asked about my sister. You asked about your sister? They just said who was in there. I said my sister. By the time that they circle back to the why question, Derek has decided that he is no longer willing to talk to them without a lawyer. So you were about to tell me the why. Why did you uh, kill your mother? Do you know? I have to say it now. Yeah, get it off your chest. Absolutely. You can only for a lawyer. Okay, at this point, you want a lawyer? Because Derek has asked for a lawyer, they have to stop the interview immediately. So what happened next? Well, Derek allowed a lawyer, as he had requested. He was also arrested and charged with his mother's murder. Derek Rosa is currently facing these murder charge, or this murder charge, I should say. As an adult, he's being held without bond, and records show he does have a court hearing scheduled for next week. He was initially held in adult prison despite only being 13 years old. In court, Derek put his head down as his interrogation room confession was played aloud for everyone, including his family to hear. Family members in the gallery are sobbing. <laughs> Surveillance stills released by the state attorney's office show what appears to be the teen standing over her bed, gripping a knife. So not only do prosecutors have Derek's confession, but they also have the image showing the actual murder. Did you tell her anything before he stabbed In court, prosecutors describe just how vicious this attack truly was. Derek inflicted 46 different wounds onto his mother's body. To continue to force that weapon into his own mom that many times showed that he never once showed remorse, but acted with complete and total hatred. The search terms that Derek typed into Google the day before the murder just show how much thought and planning he actually put into this murder. It wasn't something he decided to do on a whim. He typed in the word, the carotid artery image diagram. What is the best place to stab someone? 
is a small knife good for killing. After getting his first taste of what real prison looks like, Derek was apparently pretty eager to see about getting moved to a juvenile facility. It's easy to imagine why. This hearing is to determine whether Rosa should be held in a juvenile-only facility as he awaits trial. A corrections corporal testified that because Rosa is a high-profile inmate, he's kept alone in his cell and supervised 24 hours a day. The request to move Derek to a juvenile facility was denied, and for the time being, he will continue to be held in the adult facility. It has also been determined that he will be charged as an adult for this horrific crime. He will remain in custody with no bail while he waits for his trial. The state of Derek's mental health, both at the time of the murder and now, will definitely play a major role in this trial and whether or not he is even deemed stable enough to stand trial. A psychologist says the teen has ADHD and that another doctor tested him on the autism spectrum and that Rosa was when he was first brought in. So when can we expect an update on this case? Well, as of March of 2024, his defense team says that they aren't ready yet to go to trial and they are still waiting for more evidence to come in from the state attorney's office. In the meantime, every single thing that Derek is doing while behind bars is being monitored and logged. Reports say that he has mentioned often about wanting to take his own life. Because of this, he spends no time throughout his entire day without being supervised. Surprisingly, there are some people from different parts of the world who believe that Derek is innocent. They think that he could have been manipulated into taking the fall for someone else. Given the huge amount of evidence in this case, this possibility doesn't seem to be very likely, but anything could happen in court. If Derek is convicted for his mother's murder, he could be looking at spending the rest of his life in prison. Considering how young he still is, this could be more than half a century sent behind bars. Why do you think Derek Rosa decided to kill his own mother? So far, a motive has not been publicly identified. Derek either doesn't know why he did it or doesn't want to say. Did he even have a motive? Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.